you already have everything you need. You are Yahim. We're worth $10 billion because you made a decision to change your life and move yourself forward. You already have everything you need. Okay? I'm here to tell you, I don't know where you're at in your business or in your life. You already have everything you need inside of you to make a massive difference to your own life, to the people around you, and to the world. You already have everything you need. Because if Yahin can do it, so can you. Yahin is a fictional character, right? You already have everything you need. I need you guys to take that with you. There's nothing outside of this room that's going to help you get to $10 billion. There's nothing outside of this room that you need to take that next step forward. I need you guys to understand. You already have everything that you need. All right? And that's what we're going to kick off today. So we're going to do a little exercise. All right? I want you guys to go. There's pads in the middle. Can you all make sure you've got a piece of paper? We're going to kick off. Is everybody cool with that? You already have everything you need. Yep. Everything I'm giving you, and everything that Steve's going to give you, everything that you give yourself, all right, all of that just enhances what you already have. Have we got a piece of paper? Right up here. Do me a favor. We're going to do this twice. The first time is a game. The second time is for real. Down the side of your paper. Do this for me. Write numbers one through seven. It goes like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you need a hand, ask the person next to you. That's a joke. Right. It's a joke. One through seven. Okay. One through seven. Cool. I want you to start at the bottom. Start at number seven. This is the game. This is the game. Number seven. Can you pick for me somewhere in the world as a location that you know is incredibly hard to get to? It could be the bottom of a volcano, the highest mountain, the middle of the Amazon rainforest. I want you to pick a location, a real place in the world that you know is almost physically impossible to get. And I want you to describe it for me. So write it down. This is a location, a place. I don't have a white pen, so pity me. A location. Is it a, the bottom of the ocean? Is it the middle of the Nambia Desert? A location. Write down in detail. What does it feel like? What color is it? What can you feel under your feet? How hot is it? How cold is it? Right? Put some detail into that description. Who's got a location they want to share? Oh, uh, someplace cold, white, hard, distance. Sounds like Antarctica. Mmm, uh, pretty rugged. Lonely. Lonely? Nice. Anyone else? Top of the Himalayas. Top of the Himalayas. What does it feel like, Jean-Claude? Cheap. Extremely cold. No oxygen. Hardly breathe. Right. Pretty difficult to get to, right? Oh, terrible. Everybody got their location? Yeah. Alright. And number six. <clears throat> If you could physically reach this location, how would you do it? Would you need a helicopter? Would you need a climbing team? Would you need a submarine? Would you need some sort of desert vehicle? Would you need some snowmobiles? Would you need an ice breaking ship? If you could make it to this impossibly difficult location, if you could, what would you need to get there? How would you, I guess I'll write there, transport yourself helicopter plane like what do you need what what actual transport do you need to get there mike what do you need to get there um, i wasn't thinking as, as far as the actual uh, transport but um to to get to the place i'm thinking about you probably just need a car you need a car cool so you need something to yeah. get there right okay cool so we've got some transport <coughs> Number five, who would you need to help you in, in that journey? Like, would you need a team of Sherpas? Would you need the Eskimos? Would you need the army unit to bring in the heavy truck? Like, who are the people, who, are, like, who would you need to make this stupidly impossible journey happen? Let's say who. 
Mel, who would you need? My wife's support. Good, good answer. So you need your wife's support. You need everybody's support at some point. Who do you need? If this is an impossible gym, this place is rugged, it's frozen, or it's boiling hot, how? How are you going to get there? And then who would you need to help you? Now I'm going to, the next one I'm going to write, tools. What equipment? Physical things that you would need, that you could go and source and get, right? You probably couldn't get it at Walmart, but you might need to go to some camping supply, some army ration place. What would you need? Would you need picks and hammers and rope and survival packs? What are the, what are the tools you would need physically that you could go and buy and, and get to make this stupidly impossible journey to this tough location? I mean, what would, it, what would the tools be? Uh, I wrote down um, <coughs> uh, special gloves, uh, uh, then a sunblock. Uh, sunblock? Yeah, because <laughs> to the Sahara in the in, in Absolutely. The water also. Good. Good equipment list. All right, so we've got our tools, our equipment. <coughs> the next I'm going to write there is skill. What do you need to know? Because I know for a fact if you're trying to climb the Himalayas, there's some serious skill you need to have in your arsenal if before you attempt that climb, right? Because otherwise you're going to die. And let's face it, that's not the point of this exercise. So you need some skills. What do you need to learn? Do you need to learn desert survival skills, how to fish through the ice, mountain climbing, rainforest survival strategies, how to deal with poison snakes? No, that's just Australia. Right? What skills do you need that you could research, that you could practice, that you could go somewhere? What are the skills that you would need? Okay. So far we've got an impossible location. Somewhere that's so remote, so rugged, so lonely, who in their right mind would make that journey, right? That's where we started from. And then we said, <coughs> well, if it's a do or die situation, and we had to get there, we'd take a submarine, we'd take two helicopter flights, we'd then jump on a jet, we'd get on the four wheel drive, we had some transport. <coughs> like, this is the stupid location, we've got a way to get there. We said, you know, I, I'm gonna need a pilot, I probably need my submarine commander, I gotta need that army unit, whoever it is that's gonna help you, you need that. Then we said, and we also, if we're not going to die, we need the pickaxe, we need the jungle survival kit, we need some rope, we need a whole bunch of tools to get there. And then we said, you know, and, and as well as that, there's some intellectual things that we probably should read up on, you know, how to breathe without oxygen, you know, how to survive at the bottom of a volcano, you know, all of those kind of things that you can just research at the library, right? And then my last one there, and remember, this is a game. I do say the last one, and there's a reason. Stay with me. The last one here on the game, okay? If you could do just one thing on this list, maybe you could put in an email to the army rangers, maybe you could make a submarine booking, maybe you could find out about the helicopter, or maybe you could just buy some rope or read a book in the library about surviving without oxygen. If there's, if there's just one tiny thing that you could do on this list, what could you what could you do today towards that impossible location? What could you do? Could you make a phone call? Would there be somebody that you could like? We're not talking about making the journey. I'm not asking you to go to the end. I'm not saying that this is what's happening here. But if there was something in this mix of skills that you could do, equipment you could get, the beginnings of a research, if there's something that you could do, what could you do today? From this room with just your cell phone and a laptop and an email, what could you do today? I'm gonna to write that here. What could you do? Just, just what, what could you do? Give us an example, man. What could you do towards this list? Prepare for an alternative uh, uh, situation in case the original doesn't quite work now. Great. So you could just you could do some planning. Fantastic. So research the actual what you're gonna do. Fantastic, Dave. So you're getting some preparation done. Yeah. So you could do that. Right now, if we close the doors, we sat down and you said, okay, life or death, you could you could do some preparation. Fantastic. Mike. Oh, Al. Al, sorry, yeah, sorry. From, uh, a research, yeah. Yeah, you could do some research. Okay, so you, you, you could, 
physically without ever having to have, know anything about this logo, you could do something. Yeah. I'm right. Yeah? I'm going to leave this one blank, but I'm going to tell you about it. This one, when we get to the real one, which you're going to do in just a second, this is too important to include in a game. This is too important, so I'm not even going to write it down. This is too important when we're playing games. So now let's do this for real, okay? You guys turn your paper over. Let's start with our template, which is one to seven down the side. That's all we need to start with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This time is for real. It's still pretty easy, but this time is for real. Everyone got one to seven? Good. Instead of a location, I want you to write down an impossibly hard, incredibly difficult, out of reach goal that you can set for yourself. Impossibly hard. Antarctic kind of hard. Middle of the desert kind of hard. The kind of goal that we really don't want to tell anybody about out of this room because it's so far out of reach. That goal. You know the one that starts with 10 billion and ends with a smile? That one. You know the one that makes everybody go, oh, that's the goal. Impossibly hard. Something that you've never even thought about before. That's the level here. Now, remember the detail we talked about with the location. What does it feel like? What were the colors? How hot was it? Can you jot some detail down for me with your goal? So if you've written a number, as a lot of people would do, we've written a number. So it's an amount of money. I want you to write down some <coughs> detail about what that feels like. What does the house you live in feel like? What color are the tiles? What shrubs do you have out the front? If that goal is an achievement in business at a particular level, I want you to write down the people around you, the kind of champagne you're drinking when that goal gets ticked up. Just write down what it feels like for that goal. Like, this is an important step. Detail, 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 detail. Don't just write down a nice house. Write down two-story, white banisters, polished wood floors, view over the ocean, three palm trees, two hammocks, Hardwood floors. What? Should this be in a, a rear goal or more a vision? Okay. Impossibly difficult. You would never think that that would be in reach. Elon Musk, SpaceX, colonizing Mars, that kind of stuff. Everybody got it? Now, has everybody got it in detail? Can you feel it? Taste like? What would it smell like? What would it give you so deep down in your gut? What are you feeling? Has everybody got some details of it? I want to I want to tell you something that Colm Mercer told me. When you condense anything, nuclear shit happens. Right, there's a comms words. I, I don't swear a lot. But comms said, when you condense something, nuclear shit happens. Right? So when you take a goal, squash it down into a tiny little box until no details can escape that box. Lock it up so freaking tight that you can taste it, feel it, deep down internalize it, lock it down <coughs> so tight that it starts its own nuclear reaction. When you compress something, nuclear shit happens. Converse it. Half a billion dollars. I'll take that advice all day. Right. Everybody got their goal. Got some detail. Lock it down. My next one. Do you remember we did this in the game? I said, if you could get there. Yes, it's a bit of a moonshot. But if you could, how would you do it? Like, I'd need to... Create a website, I'd need to list it on the New York Stock Exchange. I'd need a 10,000 people to attend my event. If, if that was even slightly possible, what would I, how, how would I get there? <laughs> like what would need to happen for that? Just, you know, it's impossible, right? This is the stupid moonshot SpaceX Mars colonization goal. But if I could, how would I get there? Would I need a website? Would I need 10,000 websites? Would I need 
affiliate partners? Would I need a million dollar launch? Would I need a $20 million launch? It, like, what, whatever it is that I would need to reach that, if I could, how would I do it? Everybody written it down for me? All right. Everybody good on that one? My next point was, if this was gonna happen, who would you need around you? Who would you need? Would you need somebody who was absolutely brilliant at marketing and sales? Would you need a program? Would you need 10 people answering phones? Would you need a call center making bookings for you all day? Would you need a team that stacked up to 155 people spread across 60 countries doing their jobs? Who would you need in your team? Would you need your wife's support? Would you need your kids' support? Would you need the next door neighbor to know what you're up to? Would you absolutely have to run it by your parents? Who would you need in your team to take this moonshot, okay? These people can exist. Do you know who my board of directors are? I have a board of directors. My board of directors are Elon Musk, Jillian Michaels, do you know Jillian Michaels, fitness queen, and Jesus, right? They're my board of directors. Now, they are fictional in their roles. But I consult with them. Because I sit down and I go, damn, I gotta get to Mars, Elon. What would Elon do? <laughs> and do you know what? Damn, I'm gonna need to be fit. <laughs> Jillian, can you give me a hand? All right? And to make sure my compass is pointed north, Jesus, can you just keep me on track? So my board of directors, I consult with them. Who do you need on your team to make this impossible moonshot happen? All right? You can also pick your own board of directors. My guys are busy, so you might need somebody else's time. All right, who do you need? The next, remember we said equipment. What tools, physical things do you, let's start simple. Do you need a new laptop? Do you need a higher speed internet connection? Do you need 17 reams of paper to print out the legal paperwork that you're gonna put your franchisees through? What tools do you need? What physical equipment that you could go down to Office Max and pick up? What do you need? You need a new desk, you need monitors, you need an office, you need a company car, private jet. What do you need physical tools if this moonshot was gonna happen? Peter Diamandis said, if what you're doing isn't gonna change the world, ask yourself why not? Absolutely. What do you need? Tools. Skill set. A little bit tougher here, self-analysis. If you were going to have this, what would you need to brush up on? You need to be better at marketing, you need to be better at managing people, you need to be better at relationships, you need to be better at self-management, you need to be better at health and nutrition, you need to be better at what do you need skills-wise what can you read up on? What courses can you take? What do you need to learn if this was ever going to be possible? Everybody with me so far? How's my time, Stephen? Uh, <coughs> five past eight. Sorry, ten past eight. I'm in your time already, sorry. Really. <laughs> it's like I'll compress. <laughs> okay. Compress <laughs> nuclear shit. All right. Do you know what's amazing? I met Steve, as I said, 2013. I sat next to Simon and went up to Steve after the event and just said, Wow, thank you so much. I really got a lot out of your talk. I'm Walt. Nice to meet you. I'm just getting started. All right, and now Steve and I are great friends. We talk all the time. These events are where that kind of thing happens. All right? Does everybody know what they need to, to brush up on? You got some skills that you can jot down? Okay, everybody cool? The next one. Do you remember what I said? If you could do something towards this right now from this room, before we left today, if you could, right? I'm not asking you to do things you can't, but the things that you can do. If you could do something, if it's a phone call, an email, if it's, could you could you speak to someone? Could you, could you look up that course? Could you drop into that product that you bought three months ago and haven't used? If, if there was something that you could do, what would that be? If you could do one tiny little thing, one, that's all. If you could do one thing, what would it be? Al, tell me, what would it be? Uh, 
use the products that I've, I've bought. Nice yeah. idea. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Mike. Um, acquiring more education. Beautiful. So you could do that. Could you do that? Yeah. Would it be painful or would it be easy? It would be easy. <coughs> nice. I like it. Mel, what could you do? I don't know how to market. Okay, that's a big that's a big step forward. But you know what? You could do that, right? Do you know why you could do that? Because there's nothing on the planet that you can't learn if you put your head to it. And one of the best things about us as a race is that if there's something that we need to know, we have the ability to learn that something, which is really cool. So that's something that you could do. It's not asking the impossible, right? You could do that. Awesome, Jean-Claude, what could you do? Well, besides getting into your brain to function the way you do with marketing and all, and tech, um, I need to, uh, uh, to uh, put together the material that I have and now I it integrates with each other. Beautiful. Yeah. That's what you need to do. Yeah. What could you do? Today, right now, oh. in the next 10 minutes, towards that something, what was the one tiny little thing you could do? Could you open up that file and reread that thing? Oh, I see. Yeah. Could you do that? Okay. Could you, you know that email that you thought, I wonder what would <coughs> if I sent that? Could you send that? Yeah. You know that person that you thought, they'd never speak to me? Could you send them an email and just see? Could you do that? What could you do? Because I want to tell you something really interesting. This is from my own personal experience, right? If you do what you can, miracles happen. I'll give you an example, right? If we drop down on the floor right now <coughs> and we started doing push-ups, right? you guys, any of you guys know Jim Rohn? Yeah. I listen to Jim Rohn a lot. This comes directly from his talk, so I'm giving him credit. If we drop down on the carpet and we started doing push-ups, all of us, we started doing push-ups as many as we could do. Some of us would get to 10, some of us would keep going. I think I'm going to probably get to about 100 looking at how you built it, man. But let's say that I'm, I'm here on the floor and I'm doing push-ups. And I get to 15 and I am done. My arms are shaking, flat out on the carpet, I'm spent. You looking at me saying, yeah, he's done all he can, right? You know, I pushed it in, I made it, get back up, I did the 16th one, and then I'm like, I'm done, fellas, right? You know that I've done what I can. But do you know what's really cool? If I rested for maybe 10 more minutes, I could do another few. Is that, is that fair? Mm. I'm spent, my arms are done, right? But if I rested just for 10 minutes, I could get up and I could do another few. Do you know what's really, really cool? Tomorrow, I have a good breakfast, have some coffee in the morning, I drop back down, I could do another 15. How cool is that? The next day I rested, I come back in, and maybe I could do 17. A little bit stronger, right? Starting to get into the routine. I stop, I take a rest, Right? The next day I come back in, I could knock out 20. Whoa. Right? Do you know if I kept that up? Work. Do everything I could. Rest. Do everything I could. Rest. Do you know I could get up to doing 100 push-ups? Is, is that a fair thing? If I pushed it and rested, I could do 100. Is that, is that right? Right? History tells us that that's correct. So, if I did all I could do, and then rested, and then did all I could do again, I went from 15 to 20 to 50 to 100. How did I get from 15, spent, arms shaking, out of breath, not able to concentrate, how did I get from there to 100? I just did all I could do and rested in between. Does that make sense? Now, here's the, here's the other side of that coin. If I could do 15, but I did five and sat down and said, I'm done. All right, I did my five and I can't be bothered doing the other 10. How many could I do in another month? Right? You got it. If you do all you can, all you can, at the best level you can, miracles happen. We go from 15 to 20 to 50 to 100. Look at your list. If you do what you can do to the very best of your ability, then tomorrow you can do more. And the day after, you can do more. And in three months' time, and in six months' time, you look back and go, whoa. 
I can't believe that that's all I could do for such a short amount of time. But here's the key. You have to do all you can. Because otherwise you get no miracle. You have to do all you can. Otherwise you don't get strong. You don't get smart. Right? But here's the thing. Do what you can. Do what you can do. Nobody on the planet can do what they can't do. But you can do what you can do. Am I on the right path? All right. So if you could do one thing to achieve that, what could you do? Does everybody have something that they could do? They could. I could do, I could do that. It might be painful. It might be uncomfortable, but I could. If somebody had a gun to my head, I could. And now I'm going to give you the top one. If you die having achieved that, would that be That's too serious for a game. But looking at the list that's in front of you, I don't think that's a game. I don't think that's a game. If you have a goal, you decide that it's life or death, you will do it or die, you will be amazed at what happens. And let me ask you again, and I'm not joking. If you ticked off that on your list, would it be enough? Would that be enough? Would you be able to say, that was worth my time. That was all right. Thank you for the time. See you on the next round. If you could do that, would that be enough? And if your answer is no, that's not enough. I want more out of my life than that. Then this is what you do. 10 exit right now. Because if that's not enough, if you're not getting here going, man, the hairs on my arms are standing up. I just got to get shit done. If you're not doing that with what you've got written here at number seven, 10 exit right now. And make your life valuable. Do you know what makes your life valuable? Death. Because there is a finite point when it is done. That's what makes every minute from now until then worth everything. Time with your kids, time with your goals, time with achievement, time with the world, all comes to a point and you need to tick that off and go, done. I'm happy with my time here. Because you only get one shot that I know of. Anybody knows different, I'm happy to talk to you. Right? So let me ask you. Are you clear on what you need? Is that enough? Well, let's get to work. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Guys? All right. Well, let's get to work. So it's interesting because I think my worst... I do what I can, and then I push it, and then I have to rest for longer times in between. I'm with you. And I should stop. I should do what I can. Stop and then not. not Anthony Wilkins said, "Most of us get depressed when we look how far we've got to go, without looking at how far we've actually come." Yeah. Right, man. I'm with you. I'm going to share something with you guys. This last 12 months for me, since September last year, has been total, absolute burnout. Right. In that 12 months, as barely able to function. I'm talking, somebody sends me an email, I just didn't even have the strength to reply. Burned out to hell. I still put together a million dollars in recurring income. Barely able to function. The reason I did that was because I had made a decision that I was gonna do it or die, and I had given instructions to the team of people who were my support network, and I just simply said, how are you doing with your tasks? They said, I'm kicking goals. I said, sweet. I'll see you tomorrow, <laughs> right? It was actually about two and a half years ago that I decided I, I was going to change my business. It was at the Marketing Summit 2013. I met a guy named Brad Goss who invited me to do something epic. He said to me, he said to the room, actually, are you doing something epic? 
are you doing something epic or are you just doing it? And I went, you know what? At that point, I'd, I'd put out two WordPress plugins, right? I had another one under development and I kind of went, that's not epic. It's just, it's just, it's just not, it's just, it's not epic. And so Brad's words got to me and I said, I want to do something epic. And I took the product that I had in development, which I'd already spent 20 grand on, and I was just about to launch, so I, I scrapped it completely, which is a heck of a thing to do when you don't have a lot of cash, right? And I said, you know what, I'm going to build something epic. So I scrapped it completely, I redesigned it. Two and a half years later, it's ready for launch. That product will go to market, get 10 million users, and sell for $50 million easily. And do you know what I call that? A good start, <laughs> right? All right, that's a good start. But I'm with you because honestly, from my heart, this last 12 months, I came out of it about three months ago. And I'll tell you how I came out of it in a few minutes. I came out of it about three months ago, but for so much of that year, I could barely watch. Oh, Jesus. Couldn't even think, right? I could, I could happily, easily go and pick up my kids from school. I could spend weekends at the theme parks. I could, you know, that was all easy. But doing the business stuff, man, I just, I could. I couldn't even bring myself to to reply to people I needed to reply to. And Steve will vouch like there's been a whole bunch of JVs that have been trying to get a hold of me. They didn't hear back from me for two weeks and their launch had already been. And they're like, and I'm like, hey, dude, sorry I missed your message. Like, Where have you been, man? It's like, fucked if I know, right? Just <laughs> looking at the sunrise. But in that time, and I say it again, in that time when I could barely function, I put together a million dollars in recurring revenue. Recurring revenue. I didn't do that because I could barely function. But I had given the list of my goals to my team who had the tools that they needed and I literally skilled them up where I needed to skill them up, put them through courses that I needed to put them through. When my team sent me an email that said, hey, I don't know how to do X, I said, who does? They said, Joe. I said, sign up with Joe, send me the bill, right? So I could not function, but my team understood the goal, they made it happen. Right, Matt Ford, who I hope is going to join us, he ran our webinar Geo launch almost completely. $465,000 in recurring revenue in seven days. Right? But damn, man, I needed the team because I was spent. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you how I came out of that, right? Because it's really important. I, I, I coach with uh, Tom Beal. I don't know if you guys know Tom. Tom plays at a high level. He's done multi billion, uh, sorry, multi tens of millions of dollar launches. He's a business consultant to international companies. He's a great, great friend of mine. And, and Tom, for this burned out, washed out period of my last year, has been a psychologist. Man, I just, how you doing, Tom? Just, how you going, man? Good, how are you going? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, man, I'm good. And every single call, he would say to me, how's your dreams? Yeah, they're still there, Tom. I said, oh, good, good, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. And then one day, I thought, how are my dreams, really? And this is yeah, about three months ago. And I wrote down in my journal, I wrote down really this. And I, I, I wrote it down and I compressed it. I, I sat at my table and I just brought the walls in and I focused so completely on the goal that I couldn't let any light out of that box. I was so solid on it that I knew it by the hairs on the back of that goal. I, I had it. And then I listened to Anthony Robbins who said, consider the, consider the results of not achieving that. Because it's really easy to say, okay, you know what, I wanna lose weight. Cool. What most people don't do is, what happens if you don't? So I, I, I sat down and I compressed the hell out of my goal and then I said, what happens if I don't achieve that? And suddenly I went, mediocrity, desperation, fear, stress, marriage breakdown, loss of house, holy shit. Yeah, I better get to work. <laughs> so I can press the shit out of my goal and I said, power on, and I came back, business is booming, and my team went, hey, spark in your step. And I said, yeah, I'm ready to work. So I understand. Yeah. Do what you can. Do what you can. And sometimes that's not much, but if you do what you can, the rest will take care of itself. Yeah. Do what you can, when you can. All right, let's get to work. Right, Mike asked me, 
If I only had $500 and no network, what would I do? Is that a fair question? Mm. I love that question because it's kind of like, strip everything else out and start again. And, and let's make some stuff happen, right? It's a fair question. I asked Armin Morin, who's the, the traffic genius doing $250,000 a month on Google AdWords, never launches, right? Never does a launch. I asked him, if you had to start again, what would you do, right? I love that question. So if you're in that situation, what would you do? I like your answer. Go back to some of the products that I have already bought and actually look at them and use them, right? I gave you that piece of advice last night. Every one of us at this table has products that we bought that we haven't used. If I had to start again and I had $500, First thing I would do would be recognize the fact that this is a study. And I'd take that $500 and I'd put it somewhere safe so that I could buy food next week and fuel for my car and a new pair of shoes if I wanted to go to a job in. And I'd go and I'd start working for someone else who could pay me a wage to take the stress off me while I got my business going. That's what I would do. Now what I would do is not what, maybe what you would do, right? But I would go and take away that necessity of work and I would work hard at whatever job it was, McDonald's, car park attendant, I don't care, just something, okay? And then when I came home from work, I would go to work. Because I started there, I have to tell you guys, there was a day in my life when I had $16 in my bank account, a new mortgage and a young baby, and I didn't know if I was gonna make it. And on that day, I said to my wife, <clears throat> come Monday, this was a Friday, I said, come Monday, I think I'm going to have to go back and get a job, right? Because I'd, I'd left my high paying job to do the business, the business fell off a cliff, and here I am, three months in, broke as hell, with absolutely no idea how I was going to pull myself out of that. And I said to Magda, who's been an amazing support in our business and life, come Monday, right? I'm sorry to say, I'm going to have to get a job. And I put my running shoes on and I said, I'm, I'm, I'll go for a run. I just clear my head. Uh, look at me. I can't run very far, right? So that's not a long run that I was going out on. But I put my running shoes on and I walked up our driveway and I looked up and I said, I'm getting emotional. I said, can you help me? Can you give me something? Can you just, can you give me some money? By the time I come back from this run, can you give me something to let me know? And if, if, I'm, if I'm on the wrong path, then, then don't, and I'll understand, and I'll go back to work on Monday, right? I went for my run, and I came back, and we'd made 22 cents. Somebody clicked, on an AdSense ad, and I made 22 cents. And I looked up and I said, damn man, thank you. I didn't ask for an amount, I said give me something, right? 30 minutes later, I'd made 22 cents. And I sat down and I said, damn, this is it. I am on all the way, right? That weekend, we made $15,000. Right? Because I said, I'm in. You got me. I asked, you delivered, game on. Let's play. I sat down at my kitchen table and something that I'd done was I created like a little macro in an Excel spreadsheet. Right? I don't know programming. I'm not a coder. I can't do anything to do with computers. Right? But I had created this little macro to help me do some tasks. And I thought, I wonder if anybody else would like that. I put it up on the Warrior Forum and we sold $15,000 worth of that macro in one weekend. And I went, fuck it, game on. Now we're talking, right? So, I know what it's like to ask for help. But that's what I would do with $500. So, if I had $500, I needed to start again, no networks, no connections. First of all, go and take some stress away by putting your ass where you can do some stuff, work as hard as you can, do all you can for your family, and go to work at night, right? Let everybody else go to sleep, and then you get on and study and work and take baby steps until you make it forward. What I would do is I would look at all the products that I bought in the last three months, okay, that I haven't used, and I would pick one, and I would use it. <laughs> and I would use it, and I would document, this is, uh, this is real, I said this to you last night, right? I would document me using it. I would literally write down, I opened it, I clicked on this, I did that, I did this, 
I did this, this, and this. I videoed me doing this. And I would write up a little PDF about my results of using that program. And then, remember what I said next, Mike? What did I, what did I say next? You might sell it, basically. Right. I would go back to the person who created the original product and I would say, do you know what, Dave? I, I've just spent the last two weeks using your product and I really, really love it. In fact, I love it so much that I documented my results. And I think the people that bought it from you would really love to see a case study of me using it. Could you send it out to the people that bought it from you? Like, I've just got a little page up here that can put the email address in and they can get the, the video of me using it and the PDF of my results. They can, they can you know, interact with me. I'll, I'll help them use your product, Dave, because like, no product creator on earth creates a product and hopes people don't use it, right? Right? So I, I, I've used your system. I got results. And guess what? If that system didn't give you results, get another one because I know you bought more than one in the last three months. Document it. Use it. Bill Hugel posted on Facebook. He said, I just spent two weeks going through ABC program, whatever it was, and I have to say categorically that the results are phenomenal. Right? And I went, wow. I reached out to Bill. I said, man, that's really, that's really amazing. And he said, you know, everything that comes into our marketplace works. Just the people that get it have to work it. And if they work it, it works. And I thought, you know, that's amazing. Because all of us, I have hundreds of products that I bought that I've never used with. I only bought with best intentions. Right, I'll tell you guys, don't do that. All right, don't do that. It's a vicious trap. I, um, I'll, I'll divert just for a second. I was running, I was working in hospitality when the um, America's Cup was in New Zealand, and uh, Team New Zealand were the favourites to win. And they had this media conference, and the captain of Team New Zealand was up on the microphone, and people were like throwing, "Oh, shouldn't you put Smith at the main mast, and shouldn't you be like this?" and Blah, blah, blah. And he just, he, he raised his hands and he stepped back from the microphone until everybody was quiet. And he stepped forward and he goes, will it make the ship go faster? <coughs> and that's what I'm asking you. The next time you look at a sales page, which has been written so that you buy it, by the way, because nobody writes a sales page hoping that you don't. It's been written with psychology. It's been written to get inside your head. I want you to look at that buy button really, really carefully and say, will it make the ship go faster? Because nothing else matters. It's your ship. It's your finish line. Only you know if it will make the ship go faster. Now, it might make the ship look prettier. It might make the ship a little bit more comfortable. But if you're trying to win the damn race, make the thing go faster. That's all that matters. So next time you look, ask, will it make the ship go faster? So, Mike, if I had only $500 and no contacts, what I would do is look at what, have, what has already happened in my life, a product that I bought, and I would buy it. The next thing I need to tell you is, 